So we're back at the Finerci DSO-152 guys and um, as scheduled <laughs> I'm going to be talking about uh, AC coupling and uh, attenuators, what they are and what you can do with them, right? So let's get into it. Let's start with the uh, coupling. So some scopes um, offer you uh, different modes of coupling and in fact, amazingly, uh, the DSO-152 uh, offers you both DC and AC coupling. So I have this little coupler here, guys, because uh, I purchased it when I purchased the uh, times 10 attenuator there, um, because some of my earlier generation scopes don't have AC coupling. So while I was placing the order, I took the opportunity to order the AC coupler as well. Uh, I have a Hantec uh, HT uh, 201 attenuator, uh, but it is a 20 times attenuator, and you can see here uh, by the notation on the attenuator here that this is a uh, times 10 attenuator up uh, with a bandwidth of 10 meg. Um, there's also a facility for uh, uh, compensation on the back of it, um, so you can dial it up utilizing your square wave generator on the scope. You can dial it so you get nice square wave and you know you're not under or overcompensated, but a wee bit beyond the scope of this uh, discussion, right? So anyway, back to the AC coupling, right? So we have both uh, the ability to go, let me just take the toggle wheel here and I'll move down. And you can see here, we can have DC. I know it's a wee bit hard to see when it's in blue here, guys, on the screen. Or we can go to AC coupling, right? So what's the difference between the two? When you're in DC coupling, what you, uh, the scope is then going to actually pass both DC and AC uh, signal and paint it on screen. It's going to be essentially a composite or a hybrid uh, type signal, if you will, which is actually on screen. If you have strictly AC coupling selected, it is going to filter out the DC and strip um, strip all the DC from the signal and you'll have only AC on screen. So you think, oh, okay, well, well, whatever, that sounds great, but what's the practical use? Well, let's take a practical, let's take a practical look at it. Again, in the DC selection here, guys, you're gonna have um, both signals present on screen. They're gonna be displayed on the trace, okay? So what I have here is um, just a little set with my power supply, guys. And I have a little cheapy uh, permanent magnet DC motor. And what I'm gonna do is run the motor and let's see that the, uh, what we actually have on screen here for the trace. I'm gonna apply about 5.5 volts. Okay, 5.5 volts, 190 milliamps-ish. Uh, scaling, again, my standard scaling here, guys, that I've spoke about in the past, 20 milliseconds per division and uh, 20 volt screen. So five volts, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 uh, from uh, my channel marker here, right? Just so we can see what we're actually looking at. DC coupling, this is going to allow both the AC component and DC components to be painted on screen on the trace. So if you, you can clearly see we're just above the five volt um, hash mark here on the uh, Graticule, but you can see there's actually something writing on that as well, right? What is that? Well, let's scale up and see if we can get a closer look. So I'm gonna toggle over to the scaling, amplitude scaling. Let's go uh, two volts per division. See there's something on there. Let's keep going up. One volt per division. Yeah, there's definitely something there, but we're getting close to going off screen here, right? Let me go a, uh, then one more and we're off screen. So let me just show you here. At 500 millivolts, trying to get a better look at what's actually on the uh, trace there, it's off screen. We know it's off screen because we have the uh, uh, over voltage notation here or symbology, the, uh, uh, at the top of the screen. It can also show at the bottom, but we've seen that in a previous video, guys, right? So that doesn't really do as much good. So what's our options here? The AC component that's on the signal, or it looks like noise, but there's something writing on that DC signal, 
it's so small that when we scale up, it drives the image off screen because of the DC component that's on screen at the moment. And again, we're DC coupled here, guys. So let's go to the coupling. Let's go to AC coupling and select that. And see what happens. Let me bring the channel marker back up to the center line of the screen. Okay, so we can see there's definitely something riding on that, that line, right? And again, appreciate guys that the DC component is stripped completely because we're now in AC coupling. You could do the exact same thing, putting this in line, if you didn't have the option to select AC. Again, my some of my earlier scopes don't. This will do the exact same thing. It will only pass the AC component of the signal that you're actually viewing. Right. So now we can go back to the scaling. <clears throat> if you recall, uh, at 500 millivolts uh, here before, we were we drove the image completely off screen again because the DC component was was uh, present on the composite signal. Now this is just a singular AC component that we're looking at. Hence, it's on the center line of the screen, right at the channel marker. So now we can change the scaling again. There's 200 millivolts, 100 millivolts, 50 millivolts. That's 20 millivolts per division, right? Now, not the ideal time base or sweep here, guys. Let's change that. Let's drop the time base, five milliseconds, two milliseconds. Okay, so I've changed a few uh, settings here, guys. I'm, I've tried to get as clear an image on here as possible uh, in the interest of making it, you know, instructive. So again, I uh, went to a normal trigger and I've set the trigger here to try and minimize the walk on the image. Uh, I've adjusted the, uh, the amplitude and the time base. I'm at 50 milliseconds here or sorry, 50 uh, millivolts per division and uh, two milliseconds with respect to the uh, time base or sweep, right? So <clears throat> let me just hold this image now, stop, and I can turn this and I don't have to talk over the little uh, motor running in the background there. So again, a frozen image here, guys, but what are we actually looking at? So once again, we've stripped the, uh, the five volts-ish DC signal from the uh, image, and we're just looking at the AC component here now, right? And what this actually is, is the changes in voltage um, that are occurring because of the commutator sections, the brushes sweeping over the commutator sections in the motor. Can you see the repetition in the pattern here? I think it's quite clear that you can see the repetition in the pattern here. This is a three segment commutator, but again, because of the offset of the brushes, um, what you end up with is six distinct hump humps and then a repetition of that pattern. And simply by stripping the DC from the signal by using AC coupling, or again, putting a coupler in line if you have to. Adjusting the amplitude and the time base, you can get this kind of clarity of image from a $20 oscilloscope. So what can you do with this? What's, what is this actually telling you? <clears throat> no, you don't expect perfect symmetry from a $2 DC toy motor, basically, right? But you can see that all the humps are relatively the same amplitude wise. None are missing, none are dropping out, meaning all the sections in the motor and all the coils in the motor are operating normally. This speaks to the health of the motor. This is how useful AC coupling actually is. Now, when I first started thinking about doing this little module, guys, on the scope, I thought, well, I'll show you the, the uh, ripple on my alternator in my car. Unfortunately, this is, we're on the edge of February here now in Canada. It's pretty cold outside, so I use this motor as a stand-in um, for this purpose. And it essentially gives you the same thing. Now, obviously the alternator, <clears throat> as you guys will know, 
the all the word alternator is a derivative of the alternations that are coming from the generator. The generator itself is AC, three phase, has a six diode uh, bridge rectifier, which rectifies the AC and the DC in the case of your automobile, right? Classic automobile, a traditional, I mean. But it's never perfect, but you can see the ripple. And once again, the ripple, similar to this uh, waveform here, speaks to the health of your alternator. If there's any dropouts or heavy spikes or an amplitude that goes beyond limits, it speaks to the health or lack thereof of your alternator. So I hope this makes sense here, guys. You might see a similar waveform when guys do uh, current, they check the current on a fuel pump, for example. Yeah, you can do that and you can use a, an amp clamp, but you have a similar facility by using this technique here. It essentially does the same thing, right? Okay, so AC coupling will strip the DC component of the image. Why is that useful? Because when you want to scale up in order to see something in detail like this, if you're not in AC coupling mode, this um, um, volts per division, millivolts in this case, will simply drive the image, the trace, straight off the screen because of the DC component. Strip the DC component by selecting AC coupling or installing your coupler if required and you'll be able to scale up and see just the AC component. It can be quite useful. Right, enough about AC coupling. Let's move on to the attenuator. So let me mention this little probe here, guys, that some of you guys might have uh, got with your uh, scope if you bought it in a kit form. Um, this also has the facility to select um, one times or 10 times. It's basically a switchable built-in attenuator. So the attenuator, I'll show you from here on out. You don't need this. You can perform the exact same thing with this probe. You don't need any extra parts. I only have the other attenuator so I can use it with my existing leads that I already have. It's just a wee bit more practical with respect to automotive use. This little ground line here is um, it's fine for bench work, maybe some bench work, but not great for automotive purposes. We have the option to select one time or 10 times attenuation. Those are the only two options we actually have, okay? Is the, again, 10 times and uh, times one attenuation. And take a look in the bottom, uh, or the far left corner there, guys, you can see that when I select the attenuation, can you see it times one attenuation? I'm on the five volt scale here at the moment. If I was to select the 10 times, the scale will change accordingly because one segment of a graticule is no longer five volts, but at 10 times attenuation, it is in fact um, 50 volts per division. So basically it allows you to up the utility of the scope with respect to its maximum times voltage. One plus or minus um, 40 volts, uh, eight volts peak to peak. And with an attenuator at 10 times, um, again, you have a, 10 times the uh, reduction in signal. So you can see it goes to uh, a scary uh, 800 volts peak to peak. Um, I wouldn't be using this at that voltage, but this is how it's spec'd out in the manual, as you can Basically see. Basically a little resistive network in here, if I'm not mistaken, guys, um, voltage divider of sorts, I guess you could call it. And it'll take like a hundred volt signal and drop it down to 10 volts. So that's the effective voltage that you would actually be applying to your, uh, to your, uh, to your scope, right? So don't um, exceed the uh, maximum input voltage. Again, 40 volts, um, uh, plus or minus 40 volts, 80 volts peak to peak, or you could potentially damage the scope. No, I don't really, I only use this for automotive purposes. I don't really run the risk of damaging this with the exception of a few things, right? Now you'd obviously have to be careful what you do with respect to ignition systems and you know what input voltages you're putting on it what uh, probes you would use, but more importantly, fuel injectors. Quite often have an inductive kick that can exceed uh, 40 volts easily, right? In fact, most will. Hence the need for an attenuator, an attenuator in order to protect uh, your scope. So now what I have is the uh, times 10 attenuation actually selected. I have the times, times 10 attenuator actually uh, in the circuit here. Some of the sharper eyes that would have noticed that I've changed the leads here because I need to be able to accommodate a standard BNC now with the adapter. 
So uh, right now the power supply is at zero. Again, we're on the 10 times attenuation, guys. We have the attenuator online and it's 10 volts per division. So let me go up uh, 10 volts per division. Let's go to 10 volts on the power supply. It's around there-ish. And we have one division. Let's go to 20 volts. Twenty volts, just about two divisions there. We'll go to the max the power supply can actually offer. Just about thirty volts there, guys, and you can see we're just above thirty volts there on the, uh, on just above the third graticule, right? So that all makes sense. So again, that's what the ten times attenuation actually selected with the ten times attenuator online, and everything actually syncs up. So that makes sense. Again, the intention of the attenuator to suppress the amplitude level of the signal actually coming in. Again, I think it's just a basically a voltage divider network, we resistive network in here that drops the signal down on a ratio basis. This is a 10 to one ratio, similar to a transformer, but does it differently. It's not a transformer at all in there, just a resistive network, uh, voltage divider, if you will, I think a little more than that. And um, again, make sure that they make sure that your scaling with respect to the attenuation times one times 10 makes sense with the attenuator you're actually using. Can you imagine guys, if I use the hand tech attenuator here with a 20 to one um, attenuation factor, obviously I'm gonna be out of sync here. You can use it and as long as you keep the math in mind, you'll be fine, but it's easier and I, I'm, no, I'm no big on mathematics. I just bought the 10 times attenuator so I can keep myself square. Right, that's long enough, guys. I think the attenuation is fairly self-explanatory. Mainly used to protect your scope against excessive input voltages and um, especially useful with uh, ignition. And be careful what probe you use with ignition and um, injection. Anything with a coil tends to have an inductive spike. It's easy to actually exceed the... Uh, the input voltage on your scope and potentially blow up. Now again, at $20, American dollars, there's no big investment here that you, you're gonna cry about, right? But who wants to damage their scope? I, I treat my tools with you know, the respect they deserve because I like this tool. It doesn't matter to me that I paid uh, $20. I wanna protect it. You know, hence the wee case I found. This is just a repurposed little utility bag type thing and um, attenuator, do yourself a favor and uh, you'll get the maximum life and the maximum use out of your uh, scopes. So that's it guys, that's uh, attenuation and uh, AC coupling and how useful they can actually be. Just in closing guys, I will mention this book once again for those that are uh, relatively new in the subject, as I am, I refer to this book frequently. Graham Stokes Automotive Oscilloscopes and Waveform Analysis. Um, let me find you the ISBN number on this somewhere. Yeah, here it is here. Fantastic book. I don't want to breach his copyright, but it gives you all kinds of examples, um, different waveforms when uh, looking at different gear. As I mentioned, the ripple on an AC alternator, how you can measure it, what it actually means. This is a fantastic book. Stokes has written a number of books. To me, this is by far his best.